Hello everyone and welcome back for another session. Uh, in this uh, session we will take a look on how to build a Bulova Caliber 218D uh, from your spare parts if you have. Uh, and I'm very excited about this project because uh, this is something I have been thought a long time about doing. And obviously, um, to build, uh, you need all of parts, of course, for this caliber. So, I begin with uh, the movement. This one should be clean, I think. Uh, and as well, we have uh, the train bridge. And then we will take a look. Uh, I have been gathering around some, some parts. This is a new dial, for example, for caliber 218D. And then, of course, you need this, for example, a case. Um, probably not the original. Yes, someone, something I found. I think it might be plated. It looks good. And the ring is spacious. It's not, but it's okay. So probably this you need also. And of course, this is an. New glass, I think, also, but I need to clean that one out a little bit. Uh, and more importantly, you need the coils, of course, and you need working ones. You have this, and we have this. So, let's see. I mean, readings of, of this should be, from what I understand, probably around 8, right? Something like that. Uh, we get something almost 5 on this one, but probably it gets much more if you press a little bit harder and when it's in on the movement. I'd say this is working. This one is interesting. Let's take a look on it. I, for example, let's take up this one. Here you have a the right side uh, coil. You can see a little bit rust here. I would like to maybe see if I can remove it or maybe not, but I will show you this, for example. And my little tool here. You see that? You have a reading out from this. And this is almost 6. So 5.76, 5.75. You can see, obviously, it reads out something. And that's and then I want to show you, for example, this one. This doesn't give anything. You see? So, we have a working set of uh, co coils. We have the we have the movement. We have the train bridge. We have this and we have the dial now. Now we have to take a little bit closer look to other parts here. Uh, <laughs> really much here you can see some dials and all of that we have all the screws we need and we would probably need this also I think they are yeah <laughs> need to fix that but it's just uh, all together we need the tuning fork 
also. Take a look here on the microscope. We can see pretty good here with the tuning fork and that one seems okay. It's straight and it's really good. So now we have that one, that part two. So now we will need the screws for the coils. Uh, I, know, I remember I have one set here uh, for uh, the left coil and this seems to be okay. And we'll put this one there and there. Yeah, this is exactly the ones for the left one. We'll take a look on that. So this is the screws for the left coil. Uh, it's very good to take a notice on that one. Uh, this uh, smaller one is at the below of the coil and this goes in a little bit upper. Just to show you, this is where they go. So for the other one, we other index finger, we need one of these. Three, one, two, three. We will be taking a look on that one. This is the screw you regulate when the last thing when you regulate the index finger to the index wheel. This is the one. It's a special one. We'll be taking show you exactly which one. Yes, these are different. This is the one I'm talking about. So you have a C small screw there and a special screw there which you regulate it it makes it move and one there we take a photo and a look on the screws also now oh we, here we have these screws for that you can see the right one is uh, the special one which you regulate the index finger oh here you can see where these screws uh, goes the smallest one at the top and a special one at the right and below part and as you see the further one at the left side so the next part we will be looking for is for the num uh, screw number seven and eight which goes here and there very important screws yes recently i actually fixed a watch which had missing a missing screw seven and eight and when he turned, uh, when we turned the watch, it stopped, and that had to do with this being loose. So very important. So here we have the screw seven and eight. Screw seven and eight sits in the in the fork here. You can see there, there exactly it goes. They are a little bit taller than the other ones. Oh, and now we will be taking a look at some screws which actually sit in the in the train bridge uh, this one and several of these screws which I call them sits there um, not the zero because that is in the top I will show you that later but we have uh, F2E2 Qtrain R1 I think so we will be taking a little look here um, we will be begin with uh, zero, which is that this ah. Let's begin again by looking for the screws for the bridge. So uh, the zero one is not included here, so most probably we need this one. But we will begin with zero actually. That's where I noticed I almost took the wrong one. Uh, we need uh, one of these uh, to the zero, and then we will taking some other ones here. Uh, number one and two and three and four, for example. So here is the screw which I call the G two. And here is a view of the F2. Here we have Q3. And here we have R1. 
So when you have all these screws, um, I want to say to you that as you, if you have seen my previous videos, then you know I used to call them like this. And that one goes here, F2 goes here, R1 goes here, and Q3 I think it goes there or there. No, I think it's there. Uh, oh no, we'll see about that. And now I will pronounce uh, the name of uh, these ones, X1 and X2. That's new. <laughs> Just to give them some names. It's actually... Let's continue here with the train wheels. And here we have index wheels and all the train as you can see. So we will be taking one of each and here we have them it's always good to check your spare parts to see if they are all functioning and it will be difficult with the index wheel the smallest one because the wheels are so small but with the good mi microscope you can take a look on this and we will be needing a dial screws uh, hour wheel with the dial washer and and of course some, a couple of other things we have parts for the date which i'm working on now and this is for the battery which is important and these springs very important as well without this the watch will not function so but we'll, let's begin with the dial screws in the hour wheel this is a look of the dial screws they're the smallest one here for the wonderful dial which I have here. So here we have the power wheel with the dial washer. This goes on the bottom uh, of the movement with its screw. These two springs are very important for the movement. I will show you how to and where they go. Um, well, let's see. And one there. So for the coil we also need uh, some screw and attachment. So I will be taking one here. I hope this one goes over the battery. One of those. And... And one of these. See again uh, here at the top. That one, uh, sorry, we will be there. This one goes there at the top. And then there will be on the bridge uh, the one you can take a look on. This one, sometimes these are there, sometimes not. But mine is there anyways. So after that we will be needing hands. So I was thinking these two. Three. Fitting with the dial, I think. And then we have the Crown and rash, uh, sorry, uh, and then sliding pinion, winding pinion, and then this is the changes the date, I think. If I'm not wrong, it helps to change the date, it's part of the mechanism when you change the date. And here we have them under the microscope. So, for the calendar, we will need this uh, date disc, and then we need uh, this. Bring this is for 218D, remember? All of this is only caliber 218D, I think. And I'm not sure about the other versions. And then this. Another spring goes... This one is very important also. Goes under there. I will show you later when we will assemble this. First a look on all the parts. I think this can be pretty help useful 
if you mix the screws then you can maybe look at this video in the future. These are the screws uh, for, uh, for the, this one. I'll take a look. Sorry for the minute. Let's see. Wait. This one. So here we're beginning to reach uh, the end. We have collected almost everything for the keyless. Uh, we have uh, all the massive plates here. See if you can see there. This is important. Another little spring also. I will show you all of this when I will connect everything. You have the Canon pinion. Uh, it's the ETA type of version integrated. There and uh, we have a minute wheel, and this uh, little fellow is part important for the date change. And we have this intermediate wheel, I think, or setting wheel. Not sure if it's an intermediate wheel or setting wheel. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're getting there with all of this. Here we have the parts: the yoke, the yoke spring, intermediate wheel, the date shift. Uh, spring, whatever the name is. Uh, yeah, here it looks like good. And here we have everything. Now it's time to assemble this. Hello and welcome back. So uh, now it's time to reassemble this one with all the parts which we have collected here for this watch from the spare parts. I always begin with satin lever screw and the satin lever. So they are actually there. You can see here pretty good. We will add some oil soon also. And I think it would be interesting also of course to place uh, this little fellow here because this is the date uh, function, all right? I think it's either supposed to be down. Now, actually, it's good to place it in the holder, also. can see it matches and you can add oil also on the stem now. Oh, then I will do like this. can actually now it's connected. I think for now it's better to open up so you can place the stem so it won't get lost in there. I mean, it needs to be connected here.
That's okay, I think for now. Here's the deer at the yolk. And I already added the oil to the stem and all of that, but I will add some more here. You know, every time since I saw this in one of uh, another video I used to add here, <laughs> we learn from each other.
I think this detail is important to show so you don't place this on the wrong side this is the correct side not not this side you can also see by the metal the finishing also it's different there it goes like this here we show you okay Uh, yes, because there. So let's take a look here. Uh, for Cult 218D, you need a spring that looks like this. Some fiber there. Um, there are other versions, uh, then you may, might need this, but not. this is not for Cult 218D. So you might want to have uh, this spring, and I'm gonna see if I can. Actually, also, she goes let's see. Tricky this part. Mm. 
let's see if I remember correctly this goes here and there's will the screw be and this this will hold it and then this one will touch that one um, so I remember something it was much easier to place it like this and then also you can adjust it we will see if I am right or wrong here So we will be yes, carefully adding Interesting.
I'm gonna lose this one, obviously. <laughs> Well, this was pretty hard with this one. I actually lost one uh, little spring uh, in the photo. You can see that one actually lost, got lost, but I will try to find it here. It's here somewhere. Hopefully I can find it or maybe not. However, uh, let's take a look here then. Mm. This part should be... Let's open it up a little bit here. Sorry, can see this. So 
Oh, we should there exactly. This is how I remember it was. But sadly, one spring got lost here. Lucky me, I had some spare parts, and that was the last one for Caliber 2 and 18D. So hopefully, I can find that one soon.
So now it's time for the train. Double check here on the Once I managed to place everything with one, that was so lucky. Not sure if that will happen now though. some work I have shown you before this is how it looks when the train is perfect aligned now you need to hold it and close it with the screws as I call them G2 F2 so this is for the right coil and this is super important that this screw because I was troubleshooting it and I was using this one and I didn't have this black little thing so it probably caused bad contact the, this should be the one to uh, use here. Finally, after some adjusting, maybe it took two hours to fix this, but this is the result and it's working good. Well, a little bit of regulating left, but uh, this is how I built this uh, Belova. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.